every person is unique in his or her own way. And yet there are individuals who stand out more clearly from the crowd than others. Accordingly, some people have lost one or more body parts as a result of illnesses or accidents. But how do they actually live with such limitations? What led to the loss of the body part? And how do people manage to cope with everyday life despite the physical differences? This much in advance, the 10 unique people we are about to introduce you to are an inspiring example that is possible to lead a happy and fulfilled life and to accomplish admirable feats despite everything. Thus, the people from our video show us once again that nothing is impossible if you just have the faith and determination to make your dreams come true. Have you ever heard of a person who lost a body part and still doesn't let it get them down? Feel very free to leave us a like and a subscribe and tell us about it in the comments below. The most interesting comments will be marked with a heart and pinned at the top. Raymond Robinson Not all urban legends are fictional. In western Pennsylvania, for example, it was said in the past that an eerie figure roamed at night that had no face. Instead, this would have a grotesquely distorted grimace that sent shivers down your spine. What the narrators did not think of with their modern horror stories, however, the so-called Green Man or Charlie No-Face was by no means some kind of monster. But a man named Raymond Robinson, who, like everyone else, had his own fears, desires, and dreams. But what led Raymond to literally lose face and later roam the nighttime streets of his home? Born in 1910, eight-year-old Raymond suffered a momentous accident when he climbed a utility pole to reach for a bird's nest. The electric shock that subsequently passed through the boy's body was so violent that he lost his eyes, nose, and right arm. That the child survived the incident at all was a medical miracle according to doctors. Because of the great horror Raymond's appearance caused among those around him, he rarely ventured outside during the day. Instead, he preferred to get some fresh air under the cover of darkness, making his way with the help of a walking stick. However, groups of locals would always gather to intercept and gawk at the man without a face during his nighttime walks. In the last years of his life, however, Raymond did not go outside. He retired to the Beaver County Geriatric Center, where he died in 1985 at the age of 74. Paul Alexander U.S. citizen Paul Alexander holds an unusual world record. He is the man who has lived the longest in an iron lung. In 1952, six-year-old Paul fell seriously ill with polio and was from then on paralyzed from the neck down. Since then, the iron lung, which ensures the ventilation of the patient with the help of negative and positive pressure, was an integral part of the Texan's everyday life. However, Paul's will to survive and his ambitions were stronger than any blow of fate, no matter how severe. He learned a special breathing technique that allowed him to leave the iron lung for longer and longer periods of time, and graduated from high school as the second best student in his class. And mind you, he did this without ever having attended classes on site. Paul went on to study law, worked as a teacher at a vocational school, and was admitted to the bar in 1986. Today, he is one of just two people still using the iron lung. Craig Lewis Craig Lewis, or the first person to survive without a heart, and therefore without a heartbeat. The Texan suffered from a disease called amyloidosis in which abnormally folded proteins lodge in various tissues and organs and affect the entire body. After the disease had already spread to Craig's heart, his doctor saw only one solution. He removed the then 55-year-old's vital organ and inserted a homemade machine instead. Previously successfully tested on calves, this did not make the blood pulsate in the classical sense, but created a continuous flow through the body. At first, it seemed that this unique transplant had saved Craig, but five weeks after the surgery, he was no longer alive. However, 
This was not due to the artificial heart in his chest, but to the fact that the amyloidosis had also affected the other organs. Tina Earls In 2012, Tina Earls made a disturbing discovery. Every time she tilted her head to the side, fluid dripped from her nose and the left side of her face went numb. She was also struggling with an excruciating itch more and more often. At first, her doctor diagnosed her with an infected hair follicle. Another medical professional concluded that she only had a small inflamed scratch. However, since no antibiotic therapy worked, Tina decided to see a specialist in 2014. She explained to her that she didn't have an inflamed hair follicle or a scratch, but cancer. After a few operations, the doctors were able to remove the diseased tissue, but there still was a very high probability that the cancer would be turned. Since it was already too late for radiation therapy, Tina considered a radical cut. She had her entire nose removed. And even though this operation did not leave a mark on Tina's psyche, she was determined to go on living in order to be there for her children. According to her own statements, the reactions she receives in her environment are gratifyingly positive and empathetic. Henry Gustav Moleason During his lifetime, Henry Moleason was called the man without a brain. But this designation was not quite correct. Born in 1926, Henry was referred to a surgeon in the early 1950s to treat his epilepsy. He ended up removing large sections of the hippocampus and the amygdala, and indeed, the drastic surgery helped to control the seizures. But Henry suffered from severe anterograde amnesia from then on. This means that he has not been able to store any new events in his long-term memory ever since. In stark contrast, however, he was able to acquire new motor skills, such as playing golf. The problem? Afterwards, he can no longer remember ever having learned this, and therefore, believed to be a true natural. Since everything that happened more than 30 seconds ago immediately disappeared from Henry's memory, but he could still remember events that took place before the operation. He was constantly living in the mental past. The information drawn from Henry's history played a fundamental role in the development of theories about memory. He died on December 2, 2008. Eric Ramirez Beauty, as we all know, is in the eye of the beholder. And for Colombian Eric Ramirez, there is nothing more attractive than being a walking skeleton. To get as close as possible as this particular look, Eric, who calls himself Colica Skull, already has his ears and his nose removed. In addition, he has a forked tongue and countless tattoos that transform him into a living skeleton. However, these drastic steps were far from enough for Eric. In order to be as smooth as a skeleton, down below as well, he wants to have his genitals amputated. Tiffany Geigel New Yorker Tiffany Geigel was born with an extremely rare jarko livin syndrome. This disease manifests itself in the form of skeleton malformations, which among other things mean that the organs in the chest cannot develop properly and that Tiffany is only 1.2 meters tall. Nevertheless, to help their daughter lead as normal a life as possible, her parents enrolled her in ballet at the tender age of three, a decision that, in retrospect, was spot on by her own account. Dancing saved Tiffany's life. She has turned her passion into a career, performs regularly on Broadway, and has even made a few TV appearances. Christian Bachman Although Christian Bachman is not yet 10 years old, he has already had to endure some serious hardships. The boy from the USA has already undergone seven reconstructive surgeries and has always been dependent on a feeding tube. The reason for this is that Christian suffers from an extremely rare disease which, among other things, is responsible for the fact that he was born without eyes. And although he is a fun-loving and bright child, he is constantly confronted with mean comments and insults. In order to create more awareness and acceptance of the rare disease, 
of which only 60 cases have been documented among the general population, Christian's mother has decided to publicly share everyday life with her son. Kyle Maynard No excuses. This is not only the name of the gym that Kyle Maynard founded, but it's also his personal motto in life. Although the U.S. American was born without forearms and lower legs, he is a true sportsman. Kyle has a passion for football, wrestling, weight training, mixed martial arts, and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro without prosthesis. He has also been a guest on Oprah Winfrey and Larry King and is an inspirational, motivational speaker. Dallas Weens November 13, 2008 was the day that changed Dallas Weens' life forever. After his aerial work platform touched the high voltage cable, he suffered severe burns that resulted in the loss of his eyes, nose, and lips. Less than three years later, Dallas was taken to Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital there. In the course of a 15-hour surgery, doctors were able to perform a complete face transplant, a procedure that was unique in the U.S. to date. Since Dallas did not have health insurance at the time of the accident, the costs were covered by the U.S. Department of Defense. The results and the experience of the transplant will benefit those soldiers who sustained facial injuries. So folks, and now it's your turn. What do you think about the featured people and their background stories? We are looking forward to your comments. Feel free to give us a thumbs up and a subscription to stay up to date from now on. And with that, thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.